Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast in Australia. I wish I could say it was really golden and warm and sunny here this this evening, but it's not. It's actually very, very cold. We're in the middle of winter and I don't particularly like winter, but anyway, that's enough of my griping. I mean, I hope you've had an absolutely fantastic week. It's been an interesting week around the world, hasn't it? I mean, unfortunately, COVID-19 is certainly not waning in any way. If anything, I think the the pandemic itself around the world is getting a little bit of a resurgence again. And look, it's it's one of those sort of things that I think we can't become complacent with. I think we've really got to all become even more vigilant than what we were. And that doesn't necessarily mean locking ourselves away in hibernation, but it does mean really following the guidelines of your local area. And I know here in Australia, there's sort of the debate is to wear a mask or whether not to wear a mask. And majority of people here in my country choose not to. I'm not one of those. I believe if you go out it's good manners to wear one so that you're not infecting someone else in case you have the germ. So that's my little gripe for the week. So let's get on with the show. And it's 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 going to be an action-packed show as always. This week, the, the card of the week is the Page of Pentacles. Now, the Page of Pentacles, in the tarot, the pages and the knights, people sort of always get very, very confused with. They say, but how does this apply to me, Amanda? Well, the page has two meanings. The first meaning is a young woman up to the age of 25. Well, for most of us that are joining me here on the show, we're probably a little bit north of 25. So we'll look at the secondary meaning, which is a student, male or female. Now, people say to me, I'm not going back to school. I'm not doing any study. Now, that's actually quite wrong. We are all students of the universe. We are all continuing to learn, to grow to master new things. And this year is a very good example of that. How many of us have had to learn some new skills or look at things differently in the way that we've approached our lives during this pandemic? So we've all been students of living our lives in a very, very different way. So what I see when I see this card come out, and particularly as card of the week for around the world is, let's embrace something new in our lives. Let's look at maybe a different way of learning something or applying the knowledge that we've got in a different way. Let's not be so closed off and say, oh, this is the only way something can be done. Maybe we can start to approach something with a different set of eyes. Now, that might be a very, very good way to start looking at things this week. So we've got a lot of action happening as we have our little glimpse around the universe. Mercury is retrograde. He's been retrograde for almost a week now. And Mercury retrogrades are fun times of the year. We have them three times of the year. And it's where communication, if anything that can go wrong on a communication level, whether it's your electronic devices, telephones, letters, faxes, text messages, the spoken word, it will. It's a time when it's not the perfect time to be getting your message out there because most people don't have their listening ears on. And if they do, they're preoccupied with other things. So it's a very interesting time if you're trying to get an important message out to the masses or even just trying to talk to your family members. And particularly if it's of an emotional nature or it's emotionally charged because Mercury at the moment is actually sitting in the water sign of cancer. So it's sort of asking us to look at our own family environment, our values, the things that are important to us, the things that really affect our personal little family and to try and apply communication in that. So it's a very tricky time if you're trying to sort out family squabbles or differences or trying to get your message across, make sure that the person that you're having the conversation with is actually listening and maybe just double check to make sure that they are listening periodically throughout the conversation because they might be saying yes, yes, yes in all the right places, but are they really listening or are they just sort of saying yes to your question? They're half listening, but their mind's focused on something else. And Mercury retrograde goes retrograde three times a year or goes backwards in the solar system three times a year and it's a time of introspection it's a time when we can start to sort of 
inadvertently look inside ourselves, start to find some some answers. It's the perfect time to sort of start resetting your goals for the future, looking at what isn't working, what you might need to change, what you what your your, ne- your next few months is the direction that you're taking your life or your business or your relationship. It's not necessarily a time to start something new. It's certainly not the time to sign a contract or go into negotiations unless you more than triple check everything that's there. I always try and avoid, if I can, signing any contracts or any or agreeing to anything new under a Mercury retrograde because quite often, you know, you can agree to something verbally or in person and then when you get the written form of it and you sign it and you glance at it and you think, yes, that looks all right, without going through it with a fine-tooth comb, you've agreed to something that you didn't really want to agree to. So if in all if in all honesty, if you can avoid signing a contract at this time, it would be preferable until July 12. I always allow a couple of days past the, the Mercury retrograde completion because I think you've got to give it a little bit of time to sort of rev back up and go forward. Now, having said that, Mercury is actually holding hands very loosely, but holding hands with the sun in Cancer. So it's a time when I think our attentions and our focus turn to home turn to our emotions, turn to wanting to sort of, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, not necessarily snuggle up at home in front of the warm open fire, but it's a time when you really want to sort of realign yourself with the things that are important to you, the things that give you your security. And for most of us, that's our home base in some form or another. So it's a time when we really want to realign ourselves with what's important to us. And, you know, family more than anything has been the thing that I suppose has come out of this pandemic that we've all sort of really felt the need to hold our loved ones close and not want to let them go and sort of become more aware of how much time we spend away from them and have become so self-centred and self-absorbed. So Mercury will only look to reaffirm this. Now, with COVID-19, we don't look like we're getting any answers soon. I mean, we've still got the same planetary configurations that I've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks on the show. Pluto conjunct Jupiter and Capricorn, all the official stuff, all the stuff connected with big business, hospitals, doctors, dentists, lawyers, anything that's official in your life, which is still conjunct or holding hands planet Saturn of discipline in Aquarius, asking us to think outside the square. Let's look for some different, unique sort of solutions and answers. And it's interesting because without sort of throwing stones at any one particular country, we all seem to be collectively around the globe, all running around in circles. It's like we all seem to be going back and doing the same things we did a few months ago and saying, oh, that's not quite working the way that I anticipated or we haven't flattened the curve or we haven't got rid of coronavirus or it hasn't gone away because I told it to. And it's sort of like, well, hang on a minute, maybe we've got to approach this slightly differently. Maybe it's not one size fits all. Maybe it's a very individual situation of looking at our own local environments and that area's needs and sort of focusing on, you know, a smaller area instead of saying, okay, the whole of the country can do this now or the whole of the country can do that. Maybe we need to break it up into sections. I don't know. I'm not a politician. I'm only looking at it from an astrological standpoint. And finally, this week, I want to talk about the planet Neptune and Mars. Now, Neptune is the planet of the illusion and the delusion. It's where we sort of can sit in a little bit of a fog for a while while we try and sort out what's going on in the world around us and in our own lives. Now, when the planet Neptune, which is also very creative, and this is where we get our, our, our brilliant geniuses that create the movies that we love to watch and the, the fabulous songwriters and everything usually have a very strong Neptune in their chart. But when we have the planet Neptune transiting and holding hands with Mars, the planet of action, the planet of drive and determination, and they're both sitting in Pisces. Now, Pisces is considered the 12th sign of the zodiac, and it's also affectionately known as the dustbin. It's sort of like where everything collectively gathers before we throw it out in the trash or we keep it on board because we say it's powerful and and it's interesting. So it's a combination of probably both here. I feel with Neptune sort of holding hands with Mars, Neptune's asking us, 
to sort of maybe just slow down a little bit, let our thoughts just wander here, wander there, as if wandering around in a Neptunian fog. We don't necessarily have all the answers, but maybe in this process of just allowing our minds to wander and take a deep breath and take a step out of the situation, maybe we will get some light bulb moments or we will get some you know, genius flashes here. Now, Mars is the planet of action and determination and drive. So, you know, Mars is sort of egging us on to say, come on, let's get some answers. Let's get things happening. Let, you know, we want this all closed off. We want it all finished off. We want it all tidied up by a certain date. Well, I haven't known a virus yet to do as it's told or to answer to our human timetable so maybe what the answer is here maybe we're approaching things in the wrong way maybe we're looking to be in too much of a hurry and that we're missing some vital steps in the process of maybe bringing this virus under control i don't know that's just my thoughts when i looked at you know neptune conjunct mars i thought maybe we're approaching this in a warlike fashion in the wrong way we're attacking it in the wrong process you know we've We've got all our soldiers out front instead of leaving a few back to say, OK, what's the strategy here that we need? I'm sure we'll find more answers as the next few months unfold. So our candle of the week this week, I've chosen the sun. Look, I really do believe that we could all do with some sunlight, some fresh perspective in our lives where we can sort of allow the light into what's been a very, very dark time for a lot of people around the world as everybody struggled with the new normal. And what does this mean? And the rules and regulations change hourly or by the minute, it feels like, that we could all just do with going out and basking in the sunlight or basking in the light of just sort of saying, isn't that lovely? I feel a sense of freedom. I feel a sense of summer. I feel a sense of, you know, warmth and being able to just be free and easy in my life. So that's why I've chosen the sun candle this week. And, of course, in our gift box, I have also have... Um, the sun candle, and until we, we come out of COVID-19, which I don't know when that's going to be, we'll always feature the my angel in the sky for those people that have lost somebody, and not just with COVID, but people that, have, that are suffering any kind of loss at the moment. I think it's important that we don't forget those people that have gone before us. And the final candle I put in the gift pack this week was the candle of passion. I think we all need to start being a little bit passionate, don't we? We need to get some energy. We need to get some vitality, get out and get some vitamin D and get some sunlight, get some inspiration into our lives that we can start to feel a little bit more positive with where our lives actually tend to be heading this week. It would be nice to be able to do so. We're, so we're going to talk with Mary now in... Poco Mountains in Pennsylvania, and I'm sure I've got that wrong. Mary, how are you tonight, dear? I'm well. How are you? Very well. Thank you, Mary. Do you have a question I can work with, sweetie? Yes, I do have a question. I've been going through a difficult financial situation that I thought was solved before the virus came, and it's mm -hmm. been going on for a year and a half now, my partner and I, our, our situation, and I'm wondering... What's going to happen with that? Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mary. I mean, unfortunately, the, the virus, I think, sort of took the, all of us by surprise and it sort of wasn't something we factored into our lives heading into 2020. It's interesting because what they're showing me is that even though you still feel very stuck and you still feel as if nothing that you've done or the steps that you've taken are showing you any great progress. They're showing me from the other side the exact opposite, that even though we might have only, you know, etched forward a quarter of an inch, it's been like a mile in the leap that you've actually sort of taken. So they're also sort of sharing with me, look, look, there's not a magic wand that I can say, you know, we can wave the magic wand and your finances will suddenly become miraculously fixed. But what they are showing me is that we are edging closer and closer and closer and closer towards where you want to be. And I feel by August, it's like I can feel you exhaling and saying, oh, thank goodness, we've come out the other side. I can start to see light at the end of the tunnel. I can start to see that we're actually making traction. The decisions, the choices, the things that we've done are starting to bear fruit. We can start only to see our way out the other side. Had the virus not struck, I don't know that we would have necessarily been 
any further along than what we are now. Now, that's interesting because I know you sort of feel that you would have been. But what they're sharing with me, what your guides are sharing with me, is it wouldn't necessarily have been much further along. Yeah, we might have been a month or two further along than what we are now. But this was going to be this slow no matter what. This was sort of the pace that this part of your journey was going to take. So has there been some opportunities or is there some opportunities coming up that you can see that could bring some extra finances into the household? Because I am actually seeing extra money coming in. Uh, we are going to get another lawyer to right. expedite the process. Lawyer okay, number two. Well, that may be <laughs> That may very well be what I'm seeing then, because to me, I could see extra money coming in quite quickly. It was like, finally, we're okay. getting where we need to go. And that's a good thing. It's not so much that yeah. the, the lawyer that you've had hasn't been right. It's just they've been too slow. It's like well, there's it no was solved there. and then we didn't hear from him when the virus hit. So we don't even know what's going on with the first lawyer. <laughs> it's no, just been okay. one step back after another. Um, we, I like yeah, to but move I even, the year. But I still do you see that happening? Do I see what's with him? Do you see me moving within the year out of I the do area? We really like to move. Yeah, no, I do see you moving within the year. I don't think it's going to be this year. I think it's going to be the early part of 2021. But from August okay. onwards, it's like everything starts to take off really, really fast. And look, again, I want to come back to this lawyer that you've got, whether we'd had a virus or not, I still don't think he would have moved any faster than what he's done. He's just, it's not necessarily, was he wrong? It's just, I don't well, know. He, he just got doesn't us see. what we needed. Yeah, he got us what we needed. However, then he just disappeared and kept more than his fair share of what we needed to get. That's the problem. And we haven't heard back for three and a half months now. Yeah, but that's odd. I mean, I, I just find that I very know. peculiar. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's not as if all the telephones have gone down or all the, you know, electronic devices that he can't send an email or something just because he's, we're all in COVID. We've all still functioned. We just mightn't have done exactly. things face to face like like we would have done. So, right. yeah, I mean, right. I, th I think there's something else there. I don't think it's just the virus, whether or not he's been you know, physically sick with another illness, that may be, there's something else there. There's another reason. It's not just COVID with him. But anyway, there's someone else okay. that you're going to engage or someone else in the yeah. firm that he's with that's going to take on this and things are going to start to move fairly quickly, I feel, from about August. And I do feel that you will get yourselves out of this predicament and things will move very much forward. So you've just got to hold the faith, Mary. You haven't done anything wrong. It's just sometimes things are designed by fate that, you know, if we charged along at the pace we were going, we wouldn't have got the better result. And this is one of those situations in the way that they were sharing it with me. Yes, it feels like the universe is, it has a different plan. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they do, and they don't always work to our timetable, unfortunately, I've found. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> well, yes, thank you so very much. Keep strong, Mary. It's all going to sort itself out. We're going to talk with Sharon now, and I won't, oh, look, I won't even begin to try and announce that. In Washington, USA, are you there, Sharon? Yes, this is Sharon. Hi. Hi, sweetie. How can I help you? Do you have a question I can work with? Yes, I have a son-in-law. I only have one child, my daughter, who's an adult. And I have mm -hmm. one son-in-law named Corbett, and I don't know if he's a bad guy or I'm the bad guy, or we just we just don't mesh. But apparently, we don't get along. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Sharon. I mean, that makes it very difficult when obviously you still want to have a great relationship with your daughter, and for whatever reason, your son-in-law doesn't particularly like you. <laughs> It's really interesting because the energy that I'm picking up from him is I don't know that he particularly likes anybody. It's not just you. It's just he's just one of these people that he doesn't particularly like anyone except himself. 
I don't know that that marriage is particularly in good shape. And I'm not saying that because that's what you want to hear. It's what I'm sort of picking up. I sort of tried to tune into your daughter's energy and she just shuts the door on me. And that might be how she sort of treats you if you ask her any questions or try and pry in any way. But I also feel that your daughter is incredibly strong and just be rest assured that when the time's right, you will know it all. It's nothing that I can say that I that you've done particularly wrong, Sharon. He's a very dominant sort of man, and I don't mean physically dominant. I mean emotionally sort of dominant, and he likes to get his own way. But I don't think your son-in-law is going to be in the equation too much longer. You know, 12 months is, is a long time when something's not working, and... He just doesn't, it's not just you he doesn't like, he doesn't like anybody very much. I don't even think he likes himself. And you're certainly not a bad person. I mean, yeah, look, as parents, I mean, I think we all have opinions on what we like or what we don't like, or we sort of think our children could have married somebody better or different or, but, you know, that's part of human being human. I mean, I'm sure our parents felt that way too. But with this son-in-law of yours, there's nothing that you could say or do that would ever put a smile on his face. It's like he's, he disapproves of the way you breathe. It's, you know, there's right. just nothing that you can you can do any, there's nothing, there's nothing you could do to make him happy. Wouldn't matter what you did. So I, I think the suggested okay. course of action here, Sharon, would be just have as little as possible to do with him. Always be polite. There's no need to be rude but sort of distance yourself as much as you can from him. And when you're speaking with your daughter, yes, look, I think it's it's good to have manners and be polite and ask how, how he is. But other than that, I wouldn't bring his name into a conversation. I wouldn't ask her whether she's happy or where they're going on the weekend or anything. Let her do the talking, but always make sure that you're respectful and that you ask after his general well-being, and that's where you leave it past that but let me assure you your daughter is a very strong woman she might not tell you everything and you know we don't as we get older but let me assure you when the time's right your eyes won't necessarily be opened it'll be a matter of you can go tick 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 you know things that you surmise things that you thought about things that you thought that he behaved like or you didn't particularly like about him. It's just like a series of confirmations. But let me assure you, your daughter is well aware of his shortcomings and she's well aware of the way that he's treated you and she's not particularly happy about it, but she's not ready to make changes just yet. She's preparing for it. I'll put it that way. Okay, that sounds great. Um, uh, that makes me not take him so personally to be offended yeah, to know I'm that he's just not going to be with anybody. No, he doesn't like anybody. Um, he doesn't know like who it is. Can I ask another question? I make masks, yes, and and I'm very surprised that they sell, and I've kind of been making a living off of it. I don't know how much longer to make them or just keep going with it. What do you think? No, I think just keep going with it. Let's not put an end date on it. Let's just keep going while the work's coming in. Just be very grateful and say thank you to the universe, and that's great. I, you know, get to live another month. I don't, I don't see an end date on it anytime soon. I think it's going to evolve and move into a sort of another area of work for you. But I don't actually see it coming to an abrupt end. I mean, I just think that there's you know, quite a comfortable sort of living coming towards you. It's just things will grow and change as we go along. But you've got a lot of natural intuition. I want you to stop questioning that and just go with the flow. Follow what your gut's telling you because, you you know, you get these very strong feelings about things and you're usually not wrong. And particularly when it comes to people, you have this ability to size somebody up very, very quickly. You know, you immediately know whether you can trust or don't like somebody don't 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 ignore that. Go with that. But there's certainly changes coming up around October. There's um, a lot of happiness coming in October. I sort of feel as if somebody's taken a lot of weight off me. I'm not sure that that's connected to your daughter. I'd love to say it is, but I'm just going to say from October onwards, there's a lot of answers coming. 
and you know a lot of things that you mightn't be able to talk about with anybody else but it's going to make you sort of feel a lot more contented in yourself that you can see things are changing and that's a good thing i don't feel uncomfortable with that so has there been some movement around the house recently have you been rearranging furniture or moving things from one room to another um yes i i have the living room kind of like a craft room and i'm always moving things around and trying okay, to put so in more furniture or redecorate furniture yeah because i just sort of saw things shifting around the house and it was sort of like you were going to get it into what you consider a very organized chaos and that's good yeah i think i think it's a big big mess right now with all my hobbies okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I like the word organised chaos, which was what they were telling me. You know, someone else would walk in and say, oh, my goodness, and you say, but I know exactly where everything is and I can put my fingertips on it and a moment's notice and it's not chaotic to me at all. It's just organised. I've always said there's a method to my madness. That's funny you say Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and there's no reason to explain it to anyone else. It's your home. You can you can live in it as you see fit. So it's been lovely talking with you, Sharon. We're almost at the end of the show. I mean, why doesn't the show go very, very quickly? And I just want you to sort of make sure in this next seven days that you make sure you have your listening ears on. If you have to have a conversation with a, a family member or somebody that's close to you or even somebody that's not close to you, make sure that they fully understand what you're communicating with them, particularly if it's, a, if it's of an important nature. Try not to sign any contracts. Try to bring some sunshine into your life. You know, even if you're in a part of the world like I am here at the moment where there's not going to be a lot of sunshine today, but we need to try and bring some sunshine, some light into our lives so that we start to feel uplifted. We start to feel as if we're moving forward. We're making progress that 2020 wasn't just going to be the year where we all got locked inside and in shutdowns, that we actually found some some beautiful sunshine in our lives. We found some new ways of approaching things and we found ourselves and we gave ourselves a pat on the back and said a job well done and hopefully we all find inner peace. So I hope until next week that you enjoy whatever it is that you're doing. Don't forget to hold your loved ones close and give them a big cuddle. And just remember that we are all in this together and we all need to take the steps that are required to keep everybody health and health and safety and, and make sure that we do the right thing and for our fellow man. Until next week, bye for now. Mm -hmm.